Welcome back. In this video is like 15 attempts in the making because I can't seem to figure this audio mic thing out on my computer. But in this video, I'm going to be reacting to 13 life-changing lessons by George Mack on the Chris Williamson YouTube channel, which is the Modern Wisdom Podcast. And for this, then the reason why I'm making this whole video is because for the past... I mean, ever since, like, January, I've been making YouTube videos, and here are some of the videos I've made, like, Is Business Advice BS, Harm of Overworking, 80-20 Principle, Find More Free Time, like, I've just been, ma I've been obsessing about this concept in, like, productivity, and I've read Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, Getting Things Done, The One Thing, and it's just been on my mind, and each one of these insights I get it feels like a little puzzle piece, which is why I have the picture of the puzzle piece right here. This podcast right here finally showed me how they all fit together. I'm starting to see the bigger picture. I'm sure as I put this stuff into practice, I'm going to be making individual YouTube channels, uh, sorry, individual YouTube videos talking about how I'm putting each one of these concepts into practice because I do think the information here is so valuable. But without further ado... Let's watch. Oh, and one last thing. Um, I took the original podcast, clipped it up. It's about 36 minutes. The original podcast is 2 hours and 16 minutes. So I do recommend watching the original, but these are the most important parts I found in the podcast. So you, you, waste, you waste years by not being able to waste hours. And it's this idea that because we're so busy, we never get round to actually asking the bigger questions. We're constantly on the C plus tasks rather than the A plus tasks. And one of the memes I posted with this essay, it's two guys working extremely hard, like being super busy. And there's one guy in the corner who's like, you're right, lads, um, can I give you a bit of help? And he goes, we're too busy. And the guy's carrying a wheel. And these guys are carrying everything, but they're too busy to realize that there's a wheel out there. And I think Tversky's point with that is, by having a few extra hours in your schedule, you may change your annual direction here or there. But if you're constantly compressing everything into some kind of maximum efficiency, um, you end up wasting years as a result. Maximal efficiency. This right here is like, this right here is one of the things I want to talk about. So I've been so guilty of this in the past, and even nowadays I try to catch myself, but some things to look out for. Do you watch videos and YouTube videos and podcasts on times two speed so that you can learn more and get more information into yourself? Um, do you constantly try to fill up every second of free time in your day with YouTube books, well, sorry, with YouTube or um, audiobooks or podcasts? I mean, I guess we all to some degree, realize how watching TV is wasting our time or watching movies and video games is wasting our time. But we have these habits we think are good. We're like, learning, podcasts, audiobooks are good. But if you never have the time to actually implement them into your life, it turns bad. It's like when you're working out, you need to go to the gym. You need to really push those muscles allow them to get those little tears and then you come home and you rest and then you eat protein. And this information is like the protein where you need that, but you also need to put the actual work into living this stuff. And then you make mistakes and you come back and you learn from those. But if you're constantly just learning, you never actually wind up living and I'm guilty of this. And it's something I catch myself working on. Um, also, always checking work. Like, can you actually put down your phone and be present in the moment? Can you go for a walk without looking at your phone? I couldn't for the longest time. Like, I have this desire because it's like we have these feelings of work is good. Therefore, I should always work because you kind of get like dopamine back from while you're working. Anyways, um, yeah, this is a great point right here. Uh, trying to get all the work of five-minute tasks... Uh, trying to get all of the five-minute tasks on your to-do list done. Getting, thing done. Getting Things Done, which is a book on productivity, recommends doing this. It is one of the 
stupidest ideas I've ever heard. Just because a task takes five minutes does not mean you should get it done right away to get it off your to-do list. Because guess what? Any task can be broken down into a series of five-minute tasks. Yeah. So, like, you have to think about these things because it all comes down to where you put your effort and where you apply the work, and that's what matters. It doesn't matter how hard you can work. And I'm going to bring back an analogy I used in my 80-20 principle. You can go try to push down an oak tree for eight hours a day, and you'll never accomplish anything because it's a giant oak tree. You're going to be exhausted. You're going to be dead tired. You're going to have worked some harder than most people in the world trying to push that oak tree down, but nothing will have happened. And you could say, well, it's not hard work. It's consistency. Okay. Well, let's put that back into the analogy. Try to push that oak tree down for an hour a day for the next, I guess, your lifetime. The oak tree is still not going anywhere. So I guess consistency doesn't actually matter. Well, or doesn't actually move the tray or move the needle here. So let's think what actually affects it. And I would say to that, it's applying hard work directed at certain areas of it. So you direct your hard work to chopping the tree down with an ax. So you need to identify first that you need an ax and then you use your hard work with that ax and with that tool and that oak tree will come down within a day easy. So that's a quick little metaphor, but let's get back to this video. Why is the busy trap a trap? Why do we default to busy as opposed to defaulting to lots of spare time? A lot of the behaviors from school that you were rewarded for, you ultimately get punished for later in life. And a lot of the behaviors at school that you were punished for, you ultimately get rewarded for later in life. And it's this sad change of affairs. I realized my age from like 20 to 29 was just trying to rewrite what I learned from 10 to 19. <laughs> so it's been a clusterfuck. And one of the behaviors that you were punished for in school that you get rewarded for later in life is asking, why are we doing this? Does this make sense? Is this the most important thing to be working on? If you said that in your like year 10 algebra class, it didn't go down well. Shut up, Mac. Yeah, exactly. But what did go down well is if you just complied and took the schedule as it came through. And I think you basically have these digital systems compounding on top of these weird or let's say incorrect behaviors that you learn at school. Let's, uh, these questions right here are literally what I think about whenever I have a task. Why am I doing this? Does this make sense? Is this the most important thing I could be working on? And a lot of people have the bad habit of listening to music. And I am 100% guilty of this. I used to put on episodes of Burn Notice or Netflix or just anything I loved White Collar. Like, I just have a TV series going on my phone, and I just, like, prop my phone right up next to the computer and have it as a background noise. And you think, this is good. Like, I'm getting work done. I'm kind of, like, in autopilot mode. Well, let's think about autopilot mode. When you're in autopilot mode, you're just doing the work. You're not questioning it. You're not thinking, why are we doing this? Does this make sense? Is this the most important thing I could be working on? You're not thinking that stuff. You're just thinking, oh, well, I'm doing the work, yada, yada, yada. Ooh, that's a that's an interesting scene. Let me look at that quickly. Yada, yada, back to the work. In listening to music podcasts, is focus your attention on one thing. Robert Greene has a book called Mastery, which is absolutely amazing. And in it, he basically talks about how one of your most important assets is your ability to concentrate your focus on a single task. And I try to remember that. And even nowadays, I find myself trying to multitask occasionally. But when I do that, I bring my focus back onto a single task because that's what really matters. Like If you can focus really intensely on a single task, then you can move that focus onto any task you need to get done and it will get done. 
But if you cannot focus on a single task because you've trained your brain to try to multitask, then you're just going to, I don't know, mass, uh, what's the saying? Something, something, master of all, uh, not saying that, what is it? Anyways, I'm drawing a blank right now. It's like master of all, something of none, but the TV show, that title, I think. Anyways, I'm sure someone will hopefully comment that down below, but focus your attention onto a single task. That is what is important. If you are eating, focus your attention on that eating, on the food you're eating. Where do you think it's coming from? How are the textures? How are the taste? How does it make you feel? If you want to stop overeating or stop consuming bad food, bring your attention to the food. When we take our attention off the food and bring it on to other things, we tend to overconsume that food and not really notice our body telling us, hey, I'm full now, or wow, my blood sugar is really spiking. You should probably stop eating this. It's a lot of sugar. Mindfulness and concentration are massively important, which is why I try to always consciously ask myself, why am I doing this? Does this make sense? Is this the most important thing I could be working on? Because why am I doing this? A lot of things, it's easy to say, why am I doing this? Like, here's a good example. It's random, and I don't care apply to a lot of people. I was reinforcing the run of my chicken coop. Why am I doing this? To stop raccoons from coming in. Does this make sense? No, it didn't make sense. Because over the top of the run is a mesh net. There's no point reinforcing the walls if the ceiling is open. So I had to give up on that task and move on to other more effective ways of doing it. Even, is this the most important thing I could be working on with reinforcing the chicken coop? No. The chickens can die and I'll buy new ones and it's going to be sad, but like there's other things in life to work on. Anyways, we are not taught this in school. We are told what to do, where to focus, and we're given a rubric that tells us what to do and where to focus our effort. And the main thing with school, as you just said, you're taught all these lessons and then you have to unlearn them because what actually matters is your ability to answer these questions. And I had a friend the other day, he was like, Jason, like, I get you're doing this, but like, what if you just got a job and wouldn't that help? And I'm like, dude, no, like, because I want to own my own company. And eventually I'm going to have to answer these questions for myself one day. Like, yes, like hiring someone or working for someone else and having them tell me what these things are would take, would make it easy for me. But I eventually need to go out and be like, when I have my own company, I do have my own company with this company. I need to answer these questions myself. I can't go looking to other people and be like, what should I do? Because they're going to tell me what they think I should do, not what actually should be done. And I'm the only person that really knows that. So you need to actually learn how to do this for yourself. And it's highly, highly important. Yeah. And what what about the trap element of busyness? Why does it sort of continue to, why does it cyclically make us more prone to being busy in the future? It, everyone's experience cleaning out their inbox and you realize you've not cleaned out your inbox, you've just essentially chopped off Hydra's head and another head has reappeared. So the more you almost try and defeat busyness, ultimately the more busy you become. Actually, my number one test for myself, because I've been this guy, still am this guy, recovering busy guy, it, the number one test I have for myself is I know I'm too busy if I don't know what the most important question is right now. What do you mean by question? The priority, the thing I need to be answering. Um, and the irony is, if you don't know what the most important thing to do in your life right now is, or the most important question to answer, or what the number one focus should be, you've actually just found it. So that's quite a beautiful thing within itself. So if you are concerned that you're too busy, whenever I'm concerned that I'm too busy, and I go, I've not figured out what the most important thing to focus on right now is, I've just Focusing on what is the most important yeah. thing to focus on I've right now is what out. to focus on. Yeah. So... I'm glad that, well, I knew he was going to bring this up, but actually beforehand, before I ever heard this podcast, like two days before I made a video talking about that exact concept and I explained it a little differently and I'm going to do that here to hopefully give people another perspective in order to help it land. I sometimes get this feeling of being constantly behind in that there's so much going on and there's not enough time in the day and like... 
I'm like, ah, like, how am I going to do this all? And it just stresses you out. And I told this to my brother. He's like, dude, that's because you don't know what to prioritize. Like when you don't have a single priority that you're trying to get done, that you're actually working on all those subtasks that you have rise up to being like, you might have 13 subtasks. All of those are going to become like the number one spot and I'll be fighting for it. And when you have all those things fighting for the number one spot, of course you don't know what to work on. Of course you don't have enough time. You have 13 tasks that aren't actually important that you're trying to accomplish. What you need to do is you need to, first of all, create some space, create space for awareness, which is meditation, be mindful, go into a silent room, go for a walk without anything in your ears and think, what is the one most important thing that I can get done that's going to benefit everything else and make everything else easier? If you can't answer that question, of course you're going to be stressed out. Because once you know what that most important thing to work on is, then you just put all your effort into that and you work until your eight hours are done. And then you call it a day and you go off and you recharge so that you can go at it again tomorrow. And you just keep doing this because you know what the one most important thing to do is. When you don't know what it is, you stress out a lot. Because you're so busy, you constantly need to stay busy. You're addicted to that feeling. You're like the rat when the cheese comes out. Anyways, the idea here is, we, at least for me personally, I work because sometimes because I have uh, anxiety about the future. There's so much that happens in life. And say someone in your family is sick or some bad news happens or how wars are going on. Like there's so much things to stress about and a very easy way to get away from all that stress is to work. Because when you work, you feel like you're making progress, like you're moving forward, like you're becoming something better. Even if none of those things actually apply, you feel like it because you're actually putting in work. So what I'm saying here is basically you need to, the issue arises when we allow the addiction to that feeling of work being done to actually overrule and dominate. Because when that happens, we might not be doing work in the most effective areas that we could be doing. We're just doing work for work's sake. And you need to step away, relax, and kind of allow yourself to feel that anxiety. Because once you allow yourself to feel it, it can't sustain itself and it goes away. I made a video about this a while back. And I was basically talking how on the way back from jujitsu practice, I used to get like this overwhelming anxiety. Like it felt like I was getting chased down by a person and I would put music on, I'd put videos on, I'd do whatever I could in the car to try to ignore it and push it away and kind of run from it. And it didn't really help. So one day I just pulled my car over. I'm like, okay, I'm going to let myself feel what this anxiety is. And literally the moment I allowed myself to do that, it went away. It was like this person chasing me and I was running from them because I was scared of the person chasing me. And then the moment they, I was just accepting my future. I'm like, okay, I need to face this. I can't run forever. And I'm just like, what is this? And they just come to you and they're like, hi. And you're like, I was, what? Like, I, I was running from this? Like, I allowed this to like, why didn't I confront this earlier? And it's because we're so afraid of confronting because we don't know what it is. But Literally, the moment I confronted it, it went away. So once it goes away, your mind will be more creative and you can actually prioritize what you need to be working on. Anyways, I'm going to call this video here because we're reaching the 20 minute mark. And I'm going to make a part two where we talk about the activity trap, which is right here. And actually use, it's quite good. But anyways, part two, check that video out. It's going to come out tomorrow. And... This is probably going to be a multi-part series because we're only three minutes into a 30 minute to 30 minutes eclipse. So uh, peace out and hope you got something valuable.